Good evening and welcome to our final program of the 2019 season of the White Lake Area Historical Society. And if you have not yet signed in, would you please, before you leave tonight, sign in because Tom likes to keep record of who have been here as guests as well as members. I'd like to thank Beth Beeman, first of all, for allowing us to meet again in this wonderful facility. I've never seen this one since it's redo, so it's great. We're looking forward to the tour. We do have all of our posters that have been from the very beginning through 2018-17. Anyway, they're all in the lobby. They are five dollars a piece, so buy a piece of your history if you are interested. Take a look and see what they are. Also, Tom said to ask if anybody wants to pay dues for the 2020, um, you can turn your money in tonight and get your membership update for that. And after that, he also made the handouts for tonight. Most of you, I think, had one. And he said that they are already up on our website for tonight's presentation. So the handout that you have is already on our, our website. It is now my pleasure to introduce Phyllis Ekstrand, our committee chairperson for the Historical Preservation Awards, who has guests to share with us tonight. So please help me. Thank you very much. Here I thought we'd be on stage and I could put it in my resume that I play the stage. But, you know, Anyway, we're here to present some awards to places in this community that we consider outstanding. Um, we don't want something brand new and modern. We want something that reflects the era in which it was built and designed and uh, has been maintained uh, and adds to the, well, the ambiance of our community. So the first one I'd like to present, I don't, don't see the there it is. Oh, this is Jean and Roseanne, and their home is on uh, Division Street at the corner of uh, Muskegon. And come on up and tell us a little bit about it. It's not a real modern looking garden, it's 
historical significance of the club. So uh, it's, it's been an honor to be a part of the club. Um, and and I, I'm actually the com outgoing Commodore this year. So, so now I'm a past Commodore. Uh, the, Mike is, we're Commodore, and now he's the Vice Commodore. So in a couple of years, Mike gets to be the Commodore. This year I'm in charge of grounds. Yeah.
I was 15 when I moved to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I was there an apprentice lens grinder to manufacture uh, eyeglasses. Uh, I came back to Muskegon when I was 20 uh, and was a lens grinder here. And by age 30, I earned my doctor of ophthalmology degree from the McCormick Medical School in Chicago and the Spencer Optical Institute in New York. Uh, I also studied later in Paris, France. Now, you have to understand that in, in that day, uh, here in Michigan, you could prepare eyeglasses for people and have no credentials whatsoever. You did not have to prove a certificate or a license or a professional education, and you could still charge money to people to mess with their eyes. Well, I thought, this is not right. So, I worked many years with the legislature. Um, they eventually passed a law that required you to have a professional education and to pass an examination before you could be uh, licensed to be an optometrist here in Michigan. And they appointed me to be the secretary treasurer of the Board of Examiners for Optometry. And I held that position for 32 years from 1909 until 1941. In uh, 1925, I moved to, oh, and because I was the secretary treasurer of that board, uh, you know, I was the one to sign the licenses for the people who had that qualification. And so uh, I must uh, tell you with all modesty, I had to sign my own license practice optometry, which of course was unusual. In 1925, I moved to North Sweden to live with my sister, Berta. Uh, Berta was the city clerk for North Sweden from 1926 to 1932 when she passed. And then when I ran and was elected for mayor of North Sweden in 1929, you see there was a period of time where your official minutes have to be signed by the mayor and the city clerk, and so you see it was a brother and a sister who signed those minutes, which was unusual, yes. Now, I was re-elected twice to be mayor, a uh, total of 10 years in North Michigan, and it was during the Great Depression. So that was a very difficult time, even for so prosperous a community as North Michigan. Uh, a third of our taxpayers were delinquent about paying their property taxes. And so you can imagine what that did to our city budget during that time. Uh, in fact, in one of the years, uh, in 1933, the federal government declared a bank holiday where all of the banks all over the United States were closed and they did it right at the time when the property taxes were supposed to be paid. And so none of our taxpayers could pay their property taxes on time. And we had to pass a resolution extending the deadline uh, without any penalty, which of course was unusual. Now, during that time, uh, the city received a very uh, large gift of land. It is now called our North Michigan Civic Center. It is where you will find our uh, library and our city hall and also our high school. And that land was a very generous gift from a man named Mr. L.C. Walker. And uh, if you come to our cemetery tour uh, on this Saturday and Sunday, you will have a chance to also meet uh, Mr. L.C. Walker at uh, his mausoleum. Uh, but he was very generous uh, with that gift of land to, to our city. Uh, when uh, I died in 1944, uh, they renamed the street, uh, so it's called Iman Street, in memory of myself and my sister Berta, uh, and it runs right near the athletic field for North Michigan High School. Uh, and there is perhaps one other thing you should know about my death and my, my burial here in Evergreen Cemetery in Muskegon. You see, uh, I was buried in two plots, which was, of course, unusual. 
uh, it was because uh, my left leg was amputated, and so it is in plot number five of our family <laughs> life. And uh, then three months later, when I died, uh, the rest of me is in plot number six. <laughs> so uh, with that, I want to thank you for your kind attention and uh, promote to you the tour known as the City of the Dead, which is a cemetery tour of living history, uh, with apologies to dead people like myself. Uh, uh, we will be doing a living history tour of the cemetery with certain characters appearing in costume and telling you a bit about themselves and uh, by doing so, teaching you about local history. That's happening this Saturday and this Sunday afternoon. Uh, and we have conveniently a little poster to tell you more about it. Thank you.